WorldNet Daily from yesterday. Uh, some of you may understand that an American serial, well, it's entitled Federal Judge Calls Soldiers Obama Challenge Frivolous. And according to the soldier, it says, this is the subtitle, subheading, Stunned Warrior, I Might Get Crushed in the Wheels of a Chicago Machine. Tampa, Florida, an American soldier questioning the eligibility of President Barack Obama to hold office has had his latest legal challenge dismissed as frivolous and wholly without merit, though the basic constitutional issue has yet to have a legal ruling. All right. Now, you may have heard about this. This was one of the first guys. They have dismissed a number of cases charging Obama's eligibility to serve as president, and the courts have been routinely just dismissing them, say, that's silly, we don't have to even consider that, blah, blah, blah. But in most instances, they have dismissed the case because the man making the suit, filing the suit, didn't have standing to do so or at least was not able to demonstrate that he had standing. He had to show that he was being personally injured by the fact that we had an ineligible man in the White House. And insofar as they were not able to show that they were being personally injured, they didn't have standing to sue. Okay? If you haven't been injured, you can't be sued. This was turned around with this, uh, well, we've got a, a member of the Armed Forces, Major Cook, and <clears throat> he's... He went ahead and he said, no, wait a second, I do have standing because I'm in the military and this, and this impersonator, this presidential impersonator, could ship me off to Iraq or Afghanistan or someplace else. I might wind up being, being killed based on orders from a man who is not eligible to be my commander-in-chief. It was believed that Major Cook's argument should have been sufficient to invoke the court, but of course the court just came back and said, nope, this argument is frivolous, we don't have to listen, na 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 the court just puts its hands over its eyes and other hands over its ears and, I don't know, to take another set of hands and probably puts it over its groin, and in any case, it's just na 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 we don't have to listen to anything you say. What you're saying is frivolous, and we get to dismiss any time we see something frivolous. Well, that started me again looking into the concept of that which is and is not frivolous and this is a this is a question that has this has perturbed me since sometime I'll bet you it's I'll bet you it's 15 years I've been concerned by this concept of frivolous because it's not well defined that which is frivolous is essentially a subjective judgment it's not so far as I can see it really is not an objective determination it is subjective and it essentially allows the courts to dismiss cases if you're the plaintiff say oh we don't have to listen to your case you're it's frivolous or dismiss defenses if you're the defense we well, don't have to listen to that a bunch of constitutional nonsense that that's frivolous that's for all frivolous we we don't have to listen to that in 15 years i have not seen a really clear explanation of what it means of what frivolous means and i don't think I don't think that's necessarily due to my own inability to research the issue or just bad luck where I just haven't turned up the obvious explanations. I think it has to do, again, with the idea that frivolous is a device that the courts rely on to keep claims and defenses from seeing the light of day in court if those claims and defenses are politically incorrect. It is one of the fundamental devices that the court system uses to protect the government. You've got an argument about treason. You've got an argument, how can it not be? We've got people that are suing all over the country to try to find out if the president has a birth certificate and he was actually born in Hawaii, and the courts say, you're all crazy. We don't have to listen to any of you. You're all frivolous. This is no small question, and it has never been directly addressed by Obama. It has never been clearly resolved, and it's the sort of thing that is clearly contrary to maintaining something like a stable government, contrary to maintaining something like confidence in government. How are we going to maintain that confidence when we're not even sure if the guy in the White House is eligible to be there, and we wind up wondering how in God's name did they get some jackass in the White House who's not even eligible to be president? There's something like half the country right now thinks that Obama's not eligible, or at least thinks he might not be eligible. How can you run this country? Where do you inspire confidence? It seems to me that if Obama had 
If he was not born in Kenya, Obama should put this story to rest now. You understand? If he didn't have a Kenyan grandmother who said she was there when he was born in Kenya, he should be able to pull out the information and say, look, I was born, I was born in this country, I'm a citizen of the United States, blah, blah, blah. It should be something as a politician. I mean, it's like claiming that Obama is guilty of child molesting. All right? These are the kinds of rumors that get started, and all of a sudden you're fighting for your life against a bunch of false accusations they can take off and magnify on. All right, all you got to do is say, no, here's the evidence. Didn't happen, didn't do it. Okay, people allege that he was molesting uh, some little boys on the 14th of February back in 1996. Nope, one there. That was his mother's birthday. He was at the mother's birthday party. We got videotape. We got the family. Got the friends. You understand? No, not his mother, his father, whoever it was. I don't know. His his grandmother. You understand? That's not a, his mother's out of the picture. But you get my point. He should disseminate that. And the fact that he doesn't indicates that more than likely the allegations are correct. That he is not eligible to be president of the United States, and the courts are standing shoulder to shoulder to make sure that the American people don't find out if the commander-in-chief is actually eligible to be in the White House. And they're doing it by writing off litigation as frivolous. So, when I start looking, when I start researching certain concepts, I really enjoy Wikipedia, all right? There are people who criticize Wikipedia. There have been reports that the articles on Wikipedia have been edited by the CIA, and I don't doubt some of them probably have, but there's so many, uh, there are so many articles up there that the CIA can't edit all of them. They couldn't edit all of them consistently. If they did edit them, they would undoubtedly expose contradictions and they would expose weaknesses in, in the system. If, I mean, the more they show us, the more they do, the more we can see. I'm not concerned about the CIA manipulating Wikipedia, or uh, I don't think anyone ever alleged it was more than a virtual handful of articles that might be edited by the CIA. But nevertheless, this idea is caught on, and some people are skeptical of Wikipedia. And I'm just saying, look, I've gone to Wikipedia, and it is a good place to begin starting research. Um, if you can find an article there, it's probably well done. And if you do, it's probably pretty well researched, and there will be a bunch of links to other to other uh, other uh, pages on on the internet that can explain more about the concept and so on. So I like Wikipedia, so I just put in. I went to Wikipedia and I thought I'll put frivolous in there and see what happens. Let's see if they got it. And sure enough, they have an article: frivolous litigation. And it says frivolous litigation is the practice of starting or carrying on lawsuits that are manifestly insufficient or futile. Such litigation may be based on absurd legal theories, may involve a superabundance or repetition of motions or additional suits, and may be uncivil or harassing to the court, or may claim extreme remedies. That all presses me as a bunch of crap. As much trouble as it is, it is to file lawsuits in this country, if there's some, if you really have, if someone's bugging you enough to file a lawsuit, there ought to be a judge who's going to hear this without having to say, oh, that's absurd, or that's insufficient, or that's futile. Well, they go on. In some uses, the plaintiff sections may not be technically frivolous because it has sound legal grounds, but is colloquially, colloquially referred to as frivolous for its perceived value, such as some medical malpractice cases that are the object of tort reform. I don't even know what that means, but apparently it means that the court can declare the case is frivolous, <laughs> under the law, or a judge could say, well, it's frivolous, <laughs> colloquially. And apparently it'll be up to the litigants to figure out, did that judge just say something illegal, or was he just passing wind? You know? <clears throat> Typical definition in the United States law is very different from its colloquial, colloquial or political meaning. United States courts usually define frivolous litigation as a legal claim or defense presented even though the party and party's legal counsel had reason to know that the claim or defense had no merit. All right? Now, this is the first thing. Is that, oh, you know, you can't argue the Constitution. Are you crazy? Come on, admit it. You knew you couldn't argue it. That's frivolous then, isn't it? You knew you couldn't argue the Constitution in this court. That's the kind of thing they're talking about. A claim or defense 
may be frivolous because it had no underlying justification in fact. All right, I agree with that. Or because it was not presented with an argument for a reasonable extension or reinterpretation of the law. What are they telling us here? They're telling us, among other things, that when you file suit, if you do, or when you defend yourself, in order to prevent a particular defense from being declared as frivolous, you would want to present that defense with an argument that would call for a reasonable extension or reinterpretation of the law. That's an implication. Not enough to say, oh, I have rights under the First Amendment. No, 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 that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy talk, that's frivolous. What you've got to do is you've got to present an argument to back up your claim 